I'm so pleased to be participating in this Liberate 2021 workshop. My name is Bill Byers. I'll be over the next few minutes describing my journey to locate the right assistive devices and how finding those devices accelerated my rehabilitation path and enhanced my quality of life. As I think about assistive devices, I'm drawn to consider the humble extension ladder, the device whose misuse started my journey into rehabilitative and assistive technologies. I'm thinking if the average person were tall enough to get onto the roof of their house without the use of a ladder, then my short six foot two inch stature would be considered a disability, one that would require me to use an assistive device to get onto my roof. On that basis, the human species has numerous disabilities for which we have developed assistive devices. For example, we can't fly like birds without assistive devices. So we have developed hang gliders, airplanes, helicopters, and more. But here's a key point about assistive devices for the people that we categorize as, quote, disabled. By definition, the people so categorized are a subset of the population, else they would be categorized as, quote, normal. As such, the experience of people with specific disabilities is unique to their specific set of abilities and not generally understood by the population at large. As a result, the customer base for assistive devices is smaller than for products that are desired by the general population. And the number of device developer providers is less, which slows the pace of development and makes it harder for the providers and the customers to find each other. Yet, when the right assistive devices are matched with those that need them, the benefits that accrue to individuals and their communities is immense. Returning to my example of the humble extension ladder as an assistive device, it turns out to be a terrible assistive device. According to the Academy of Emergency Medicine, roughly 200,000 people present themselves to emergency departments in the US each year from ladder falls, resulting in more than 20,000 hospitalizations and about 400 deaths. So safety is clearly a key aspect of design of assistive devices. Incidences of injury from falls from scaffolds is much less than from ladders. What maintains the popularity of ladders over scaffolds is convenience. The user can't easily store scaffolding in the garage and set it up at a moment's notice. So convenience competes with safety and injuries persist. My journey to the right assistive devices involved trade-offs of many kinds, safety, comfort, convenience, cost, et cetera. But let's step back a bit. To be fair to ladder advocates, ladders are frequently misused. On this slide, several examples are shown of ladders being spectacularly misused. My case is only different by degree. Late in 2004, I set up an extension ladder with its feet on a surface that I failed to identify as slippery. So when I was a few rungs up the ladder, the engineering mechanics that I learned in school were demonstrated in practice. The horizontal component of the force of gravity on the ladder exceeded the coefficient of friction on the feet of the ladder. The result was an exploded vertebrae, several surgeries, the opportunity to learn the basic skill of walking and to explore the suitability of a variety of assistive devices. Over the course of a few years, I experimented with the use of a wheelchair, a walker, a cane, a pair of canes, and ultimately a pair of well-designed crutches. The wheelchair gave me a feeling of security. Fall risk was minimal. I had a lap on which I could carry things from place to place. At the same time, I learned firsthand about the obstructions, such as curbs, steps, and narrow doorways that our society places in the path of wheelchairs and how frustrating those can be. When the time came to move to the walker, I resisted the transition. I resisted in part because using the walker took my hands out of use. I couldn't carry anything and, until I gained some strength and could let go with one hand, my hands were fully occupied with keeping myself upright. It was also less comfortable. But health professionals and caregivers were persistent in getting me on my feet. 
and a thoughtful person gave me a simple basket to attach to the front bar of the walker. I think the basket was designed to attach to the handlebars of a child's bicycle. The key advantage was the ability to carry things with me as I moved around the house. Simple modification, substantial improvement to functional mobility. I eventually grew strong enough that I could navigate using a cane. It was not an appropriate device for the extent of my lower body weakness. It caused me to walk with an asymmetric gait, which was terrible for my stamina and probably for my body. And the support was insufficient, leading to occasional falls. But I was returning to work and my own pride dictated that I appear to be as fully able as I could possibly appear to be. So I set off walking through airports, pulling a suitcase in one hand and using a cane with the other. Eventually, someone suggested that I try using two canes. This resulted in a more symmetric gait, improved my stamina. I learned that I could check my suitcase, carry my computer in a backpack, and walk through airports with two canes much more comfortably than the single cane approach. It was my observation that some rehabilitation professionals resisted my adding a second cane. It seemed to me that success in their eyes was for me to work hard enough not to need assistive devices. I felt that some, not all, but some viewed my continued reliance on assistive devices as a failure on their part and mine to work my way back to full recovery. Despite medical evidence showing that some important muscles were not receiving nerve signals and weren't likely to do so, there was a conveyed impression if I worked hard enough, I could throw away the canes. I eventually started my own search for better mobility support and came across a blog post from Dave Bexfield, a person with multiple sclerosis. In his blog named Active MSers, Dave wrote about a specifically designed and commercially available set of forearm crutches he used to enable his extended wilderness hiking. Having been a hiker prior to my injury, I was interested and looked into acquiring a pair. The company by the name of Sidesticks is a British Columbia based company co-founded by Sarah Doherty and Kareth Perrer Lloyd. Sarah experienced at age 13, a leg amputation high enough that a prosthesis was not effective. Her quest to learn new ways to analyze activities and modify equipment led her to become an occupational therapist. Her partner, Kareth, experienced in structural engineering combined his knowledge with hers. The crutches they designed are equally suitable for strenuous outdoor activity and casual indoor mobility. The side sticks crutches are made to measure and they offer changeable crutch tips for different terrain, including sand shoes, snowshoes, and ice tips. For everyday use, their rubber tips articulate slightly to maintain full contact with the surface at varied angles. The crutches have optional swivels at the base to alleviate shoulder strain for people that walk in a swing through mode. They offer an optional shock absorber that reduces strain on the hand and forearm as an added benefit for longer treks. Unlike most crutches, the grips are set at an angle that's appropriate for the wrist to forearm connection, and the grips are fashioned to provide an ergonomic contoured surface for the hand to rest on rather than the typical small diameter cylinder that can cause strain to the wrist and hand. It was an adventure convincing an insurance company to cover the cost of these crutches, but I was eventually successful in gaining insurance approval to provide me with a basic set. In addition, I acquired a more advanced set of side sticks, crutches, and extra accessories for my use on more extensive outings. After following a similar journey to locate an appropriate set of ankle foot orthotics, I discovered how the right combination of assistive devices improves the life of a person that needs them. My gait and posture were dramatically improved, as was my stamina. My friends and family reported that I looked stronger and healthier, which reinforced my own feelings of improvement. I have read the stories of several fellow users of side stick crutches. In the slide are pictured people using their crutches to climb steep grades, play amputee soccer, celebrate at the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, 
and even do a handstand on their crutches. I admire these people for doing extraordinary things. I admire equally, however, those that revel in the ability to go about the normal tasks of everyday living with dignity and on their own terms when aided by the right assistive devices. In my own experience with my side sticks, I ventured on some hikes with a hiking buddy in the mountains of Oregon. And I ventured with my wife on a European river cruise on which we walked around several cities along the river. While not extraordinary feats, I would not have attempted them without the benefit of well-matched assistive devices. A key lesson from my journey is that even when there are great devices available to meet specific needs, it's not all that easy to find them. In some cases, as with Sarah Doherty of Sidesticks, the right devices aren't available and need to be invented. But in many cases, great technology is out there and finding it is the key barrier. So as we consider in this workshop, the frontiers in assistive technology that will surely do amazing things for us in the future, let's not forget to apply our technology and ingenuity to matching people in need with great capabilities that already exist. I'd be remiss not to mention that the devices themselves have room for improvement. For example, AFOs have a compromise level of resistance built into them. Mine are great for flat terrain, but too stiff for steep uphill and don't allow my foot to extend downward to meet downhill terrain. Maybe one day, AFOs will sense the terrain and adjust to match. As another example, crutches are in the way when I'm not using them. They are a tripping hazard for others when lying on the floor, and they fall readily unless standing in a corner. Maybe one day crutches will walk themselves over to a corner when I'm not using them and retrieve themselves to me when I'm ready to use them. Or maybe they will have a hidden tripod that extends so the crutches can stand by when I'm not holding them upright. And maybe one day, assistive devices will improve human performance so much that they are in demand by people not considered today to have mobility disabilities. But for now, I can attest that when my specific set of needs were matched with the appropriate assistive devices, the result was a boost to my productivity, my self-esteem, and my quality of life. It took me more than a decade to find that match, but I'm pleased with the outcome. I look forward to engaging with you during the workshop.